How are we going, everyone? It's been a busy day for us, been pruning and hedging and trimming, so I'm all grubby and dirty at the moment. And I thought I'd better get some uh, planting done before the sun sets. Now what i got here is a dead, uh, not a citrus, it's a cherry tree. I transplanted this from, if you remember, I planted it about two years ago in the, uh, next to the dam and it never took off. That's just some of the grass growing into it. It never took off over there. Uh, don't know why it died, but anyway, I brought it over here. It actually died here, it didn't die over there, it wasn't doing too well, but actually neglect. If anything, that's one of the main things that some of these trees will die. Now, we're actually coming into the bare root season uh, for fruit trees, that is, so you can go check out your local garden centre, see what they've got there available. Um, but the thing about bare root stock, the, tree, the roots should be already trimmed for you by the nursery man or nursery person there. If they haven't done that, um, just be careful of what you want to prune off and sometimes I wouldn't even prune them um, unless you've got a broken branch like that or a root, uh, root piece like that you don't prune them off that much and at the end of those they should heal on their own so they come trimmed from the growers but the more important part is to trim the top off now all right, this is dead it died a year ago and I left it there and I thought we'll do a segment on it and the day's come this gets cut back to this sort of height so when you get a, a cherry tree i can guarantee you most times they'll be about two meters tall or two and a half meters tall so you need to be able to cut them right back down to this sort of height when you plant them so you take the stress out of the roots bad example because it's a dead one but when the season comes we'll plant some bare rooted ones what we're going to plant today is this uh, little peach tree it was gifted to me from our good friends from well, what that's their herbs and spices that we have on our website now this is a New Zealand black peach apparently I haven't grown one of these anybody else has grown one oh, look at that we've got a stone in here too it looks like it's grown from a stone oh interesting okay so that must be the anyway it's not grafted in other words grown by the seed we're going to plant this in the ground and if you're going to start planting your trees in the ground and you're going to get bare rooted let me get my scissors I haven't got a pair, I've got second toes. When you buy your trees, you can either buy them in bags, pots, or bare rooted. Now, this obviously has been grown in a bag. Let's take a look at the roots. This is grown in soil too. All right. Let's get it off. Carefully. Come down here. All right. Look at that. See how brown they are there? Don't like them like that. If I leave it in here for too much longer, by next springtime, they'll be strangling themselves. So I'm just gonna loosen this up, just carefully so you don't tear them. Oh, we've got worms in here too. Oh, that's a good sign. This is quite granitic, actually. This is almost like a bluestone base. There we go, can you hear that? That's not soil, <laughs> that's rock and sand. It's, a, it's almost like a propagating sand, but a very coarse one. So loosen it up. You can run this under water if you like or sit it in a bucket of water to do it. This is very fibrous. Not all trees will have these sort of roots like you see. Look at the cherry tree by comparison. A little difference in the roots. Now they had some big roots and I can't remember if I pruned that. I doubt it if I did because I wouldn't have pruned it that short. So for these to be that short that's obviously put a lot of stress on the tree. Half the roots are gone that's why it's died. Anyway. So that's as much as I need to do. I can not open, I, well, you can open it up more in the middle, but don't need to. Now, if it's a tree that's struggling, soak it in some liquid golf, you know, for a couple of hours, maybe overnight, a solution of it, not straight that is, in a bucket before you go and plant it. That I'm not gonna do, I'm just gonna soak that after I plant it. Now, we're gonna prepare this soil, folks. I'm gonna pull this grass out. Now, we don't do any herb spraying here, herbicide spraying. There is slasher, there are other herbicides you can use, and I know a lot of the orchards do spray their, their rows. I prefer to brush cut it. If you have a close look here, <laughs> look at this, all the wood chips being sprayed out everywhere. Now that's okay because it's going to break down. It's just a bit harsh on our ride on because it starts to chew up the blades, but I'd rather be changing the blades on the ride on every three months rather than, I don't know, rather than using poisons and destroying my environment. So I'm going to be challenged by the cooch growing in here, but that's okay. We're just going to brush it down, cut it down to the ground, and you're going to see how I'm going to layer this. Have a look underneath it. This is what I've got underneath. If you haven't seen me planting this orchard a year, it's just over a year ago, a year and a half ago, I dug a hole, I prepared it just like I'm going to do now, but we added a, a heap of compost and mushroom compost and bark on top, but we've got the irrigation running at the bottom here. Now, this orchard, if I remember correctly, I planted initially up to here. 
Now this extra row that I've put in, I haven't extended the pipe. I don't think I have, I can't remember. Um, if I have, I'm gonna come across it here. Is it here? No, there's no pipe here. No, there's no pipe. This is just grass, but that's okay. I'm just gonna pull all this grass out here. As you know, I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm not gonna win if I'm gonna try and get rid of it, but I just wanna get enough of it out so I can plant my little tree in here. Now preparing the hole, you normally go twice the size of what your pot is. Now I've shrunk down that root system by shaking off some of that soil. So depth, generally if you've got a, a 20 centimetre pot, 30 centimetre pot, you open up a 50 centimetre hole like that and almost twice as deep. The idea is to loosen up the soil, not to get rid of the soil. You know the biggest mistake we make is if you've got clay soil, because this is pretty much clay, sand and clay well sand on top but clay about 30 centimeters in some places below if i was to get rid of all the clay and just fill it up with a potty mix or just a compost it would basically hold water it'll turn it into a little well and if you've got a garden but that's all clay and you decide to uh, change it because someone says to you no get rid of the take the soil take a hole out dig a hole out take the soil out and then place some new composted soil or, or potty mix that's going to be the worst thing you can do to your, to your plant because it'll actually attract the water into it so when it does rain it'll sit in the pool of water and that's what happened with well not because i changed the soil but those olive trees down there because that's the lowest point in our property because i loosened the soil even though i used the same soil it was holding water and I had to pop the trees out of the ground. And they're alive now, which is a good thing. All right. That's all I need to do here. Oh, there's plenty. Use a garden fork. Easier to get in. See how it's loose. Oh, look, that's already been dug. Oh, that's right. I had a tree here. So have a listen to this, what I felt at the bottom. That's hard as a rock underneath there. Oh. Here we go. Yeah, I'm digging up more roots. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's nature for you. Yeah, and you guys are worried about possums. Look at the size of this possum. Bloody hell. You're lucky it's dead, Jack. So we have got roots, weeds. So this grass and weeds above ground and below ground. So tell me, how are you supposed to stop the roots from getting into it. You can spray the weeds on top, but these things layer themselves. Look at that. That stuff there can be, you know, 200 mil deep, 300 mil deep. You ain't gonna kill that stuff. So what's the point of spraying the weeds on top of the ground? Because they all gotta live together. It's one big happy family down here, folks. Look, look at this, I've got grass down in here. Look at that. I've gone down about 20 centimeters and I'm digging out roots from down below. So there's no need. Just maintain your weeds, control them, and you should be fine. All right, so digging up the hole, then we're going to add some straw, just so I can just give it a bit more body, but the straw that I've got is actually mixed with the chicken manure. All right, that's about as big as I need it for this size tree that I've got, 40 by about 30 deep. We're going to add some of this straw and chicken manure and mix it through. Feathers and all, folks. And just mix that up. Like that. Now we're gonna add some black grit. About a good handful around it. That should do the trick. Mix that through. Now when you get a tree, if it's in the pot, Generally you plant it to the same depth as what it is in the pot, or at least cover the top of the roots need to be, you know, well, what's that about? Two inches, 40 mil, 50 mil below the surface. So you can get a little bit of soil on top of that. If you don't want to go that deep because your soil is really hard and you're worried it's going to hold water, you can sit it above ground like that there and just mound it up on top. I don't need to do that here. This area here in particular doesn't hold water like that. Just push all the mulch on top, grass and weeds and all, and all the wonderful stuff that nature has for us. And after you finish planting, give it a good soak with EK Butch and liquid gold. Let's just see if it soaks. Oh yeah, that's good. There you go, folks. 
If you're looking to plant a tree, well, we're getting into the season for it, for all types of fruit trees and citrus trees, bare root and potted stuff as well. Check out your local garden centre and check out our website, vasiliesgarden.com. We've got some great specials going on and also the VIP membership. If you join by the end of the month, you get, a, you get to go into a draw to win that beautiful grape and fruit squeezer or, or press that we have. We've got two to give away and a couple of major prizes also. Subscribe to vasiliesgarden.com, the magazine that is, and enjoy all the wonderful products from me, Vasili Maresi.